Hello, hello. How you guys doing? I can't see you yet. Margie tells me you're here. Let's see. Let's see if you're going to show uh, so up here. Who is there now. currently is Betty Gosel, Betty Sorley, uh, Net. And okay, I so Betty and one. Betty and Annette and who? I have no chat either, but you said I'm going to get it, right? Yep. Okay. All right. I don't have any chat window yet, but Margie promises me I'm going to get it. So um, you also have no headshot, but that's okay. We're just going to get right into things today. Um, There's your chat. And... Oh, yay. There you are. Hello, guys. There's Sharma. Hi, Sharma. Oh, and there's my face. Okay, cool. Hey, we are good to go. <laughs> I have my Diet Coke. I have my crafty friends. I have my card kit. What else could a person want? Really, I ask you. What else could a person want? Okay, so I'm going to show you the three cards that are finished. Then I'm going to... Oops. I'm going to show you Charma. how I put these together. I said Charma. I said and I Martha Charma. G. Oh, Martha G's there too. Hi, and Martha G. Martha G, could you give us a call after the stream? It's in regards to your note on your order. Okay, cool. All right. So I've been scissor cutting my images you are not going to have to sit here and watch me scissor cut everything however because all but one of my toppers is put together and so let me show you what i've got so far i showed you this one yesterday although i go ahead and put it on my hands if you would please yeah. Oops. <sighs> pardon this it just blew up in my sorry that's okay there we go. This is one that I showed you yesterday. We've got that beautiful brown pearlescent topper. Then we've got brown cardstock in the middle of that topper. Um, hi, Sue. So this is a five by five card, which will a five and a quarter by five and a quarter, actually, which will be included in your kit. The kits are going to be six, 13, 59. 1359 and Margie will be putting them up in a little while. $13.59. You're going to get six cards and everything you need for all six. The only thing you're going to need is a trimmer and some glue and some foam squares. We didn't include foam squares in that. Did she put foam squares in the yes, kit? She no, she did not. Okay, cool. You can use your own foam squares and that way I don't have to charge you for them. So that'll be good. So anyway, let's take a look at the construction of this card. We have a five and a quarter by five and a quarter card. We've covered that with brown cardstock. Then I have cut a five by five square of that tan. And I've centered that on my brown. And then I have taken my brown pearlescent. And again, I hope, there you go. See, you can see the pearlescent shine of that topper at that angle. Then I've put my pearlescent topper on top of that. I've added some pink jewels off of that dazzle-like sheet. Then I've taken a small square. I measured this and I, and I cut my piece to be um, a half inch smaller. So I added this piece of brown cardstock here. I put four corners off my corner sheet and I added my 3D image to that. That's all there is to this card, but I think it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, next, I showed you this one yesterday. I think this is gorgeous. I've taken a five and a quarter by five and a quarter card. I've covered it with lavender card stock. Then I took my borders and corners and I went, I took my borders all, yes, the fussy cut fairy visited me. 
Yes, ma'am. In fact, doubly so because Margie did half my fussy cutting for me, more That's than half. More. <laughs> she said it was more than half of my fussy cutting for me. I won't argue with her. I might want her to do it again sometime. So. <laughs> well, okay, tiniest flowers with the most flowers. <laughs> so um, I added my border all the way around on the lavender. Then I put in my beautiful. It's really pretty, that beautiful pink um, pearlescent card layer. And I applied jewels. Um, this card right here is in the book just like it is. So you can use the guide in the book for the placement of the jewels. But really, for all intents and purposes, I put them where the circles were, the circles in the middle of the flowers and the circles in the design. So it's pretty easy to do. Then I just applied my 3D topper to the inside and that card was done. Next up, we have the sunflower. This one wasn't done yesterday. This one is on a European A6. I took a brown piece of cardstock, covered my card. I took a tan piece of cardstock and I cut that just a quarter of an inch difference. So instead of four and a quarter, it was three and, or four and an eighth, it was three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And I applied that tan right on top of my brown. Then I applied my pearlescent cardstock. You can see the pearlescence in this one a little easier because it's bigger. See that? That's beautiful. The pearlescent card topper on top of there. I added my gems to the top. I added my corners to the frame down below. This does not have a supplemental piece in the middle. And then I added my fussy cut sunflower. That's all it took. Isn't it pretty? It's really pretty, isn't it? And I love these pearlescent layers. Before you ask, and I know you will, because you're just like me and I would ask, these pearlescent layers are not sold any other way. They're only accompanied in this card, in this card kit. Now, if you like everything about this except the fussy cutty, then what I would say to you, hi, Glenn. Hi, Annette. Uh, hi, Diane. I'm not sure I said hi to you guys. Um, if you like everything except the fussy cutting, then just buy two of the push-out image sheets. They're $1.69 each, and you can add images that you don't have to fussy cut. That's easy enough. So there we go. This is not a difficult card, but sure is a pretty one. You know, I like giving you a hard time, but I don't want to fussy cutting. Okay, let's look <laughs> at, these are my two other fussy cut images two out of the three here's my pansies here are what are these called callas maybe calla lilies i would think and roses and then some other kind of little flower there that's very pretty and i don't know what it is hello 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 okay and then we have a bouquet of hydrangeas and this one i need to finish fussy cutting and i'm gonna work on this a little bit while you guys tell me what's going on in your world today anything interesting happening guys this is the only one i'm going to fussy cut on the air but i thought it was a little misrepresentative if i didn't fussy cut one of them in front of you to say yes i really am doing this <laughs> i don't mind fussy cutting either I actually kind of like sitting in front of the TV fussy cutting, but that's, that's really just, like that's just me <laughs> being weird. I do like to fussy cut though. Of course I like to color too. So there you go. I like those detail jobs and I like drawing and I like, <laughs> and I like, and I like, so you guys know, you know. How many sheets of cardstock are in it? We're going to have to recount them, Margie, so you can do the kits. Um, you can use the card samples if you like. Or we can just wait till we're done and you can. I was just going to say, 
we're just going to cut all the cardstock in six by sixes and that way it will fit either the five and a quarter by five and a quarter or the a six european a6 either one so we're just going to cut them all to six by six which is a really fast way to cut up your cardstock too so Margie and I are talking about the construction of this very kit. I thought Brittany had all the cardstock cut, but she was waiting for me to put it together to make sure that I had all of the things I needed. So that's going to take a little bit of time, but we'll still, Margie's still putting it up because there's no reason why you can't start buying it, even though we're going to be assembling the kits tonight. I'm listing it as six pieces of cardstock in the in the description so that you've got your list will that work um no it's more than that it's more than that yeah it's at least eight okay um yeah okay well, so it will at least be up here in just a second my day has been consumed with talking to realtors and family about this sale of this house that we're doing i have i bought my grandmother's house from my dad and we are lawrence looking to buy a house here in portland vancouver but you can't touch a house for the amount that she has for her budget so I have decided that I'm going to sell my grandmother's house, which is a hard, hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do. It's a hard decision to make, but I'm going to do it. Um, my grandmother helped me buy my first house. And I have to believe that my grandmother would totally and completely approve of me selling her house in an effort to reinvest that money and help her help my daughter get into her first house so we're going to sell grandma's house and reinvest the money and you can't touch a decent house in portland you just can't touch one for lauren's budget of 250 to 300 thousand dollars you just can't get into a house for that here but you can find a very decent duplex in a good neighborhood for five to six hundred thousand so i'm selling grandma's house buying a duplex together with my daughter so that she can get the house of her dreams and i can it won't be, it'll actually be kind of nice in the respect that instead of renting property that's 60 miles away, I will have the property right here to manage it too. So Lauren and I will go together and buy her a duplex and I'll rent one half of it and the other half will be her home. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, property prices are crazy in portland but they're not going to get any better i really don't think they're gonna they're not going to decrease we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people coming to oregon and not so many leaving because oregon's a pretty fabulous place to live and that means that with a finite amount of property the value is just going to keep going up so it's not going to get any less expensive to buy a house it is a crazy that's a crazy amount of money isn't it did you ever think that you could be in an area where three hundred thousand dollars wouldn't touch a house not even touch it you just can't the only thing you could get for that kind of money would be like um you could get a condo in a big complex but then they're going to charge you like six hundred dollars no kidding five to six hundred dollars and some of them more than that in hoa fees and that just makes no sense to me. That right there is highway robbery. If you figure they're charging that much to every tenant every month, that's just nuts. Your grandma did the same for you, Sharma. Oh. So 
that's what we're going to do. And I, as hard as it is to sell my grandma's house, because I have quite an emotional attachment to it. I adored my grandmother, but I just have to believe she would smile knowing that she helped me. And now I'm using her property to help my own daughter get her house. I have to believe that she would totally approve. So that's what we're doing. And that's, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have enough going on. Let's buy and sell a house in the meantime, right? <laughs> Lauren, however, is very, very excited. She has a whole list of places for me to see tomorrow and Saturday. So she's really glad I'm off on Saturday to be able to drag me around the country and look at different houses. And I think it's going to turn out to be fairly easy. I have a long-term renter in the property that my grandmother, of my grandma's house, I have a long-term renter in there. And I told him that since I was looking to sell it he'd been there a long time he could have first crack at it if he wants and um he says he wants it so we'll see if the bank agrees that would be really nice and fairly easy on the selling part of things so that's what i've been up to in all the hours when I wasn't sleeping, just looking at houses and making lists and <laughs> finding realtors and, you know, crazy. I don't think that uh, most areas of the country, tell me what a night, a, what a two bedroom, three bedroom, eh, let's make it a two bedroom. So we're just looking at apples to apples. What would a two bedroom house in a nice neighborhood run in your area of the country. I'm really curious here, here it is, it, correct me if you think I'm wrong, Margie, but it's 400 to 450,000 for a two bedroom house in a decent neighborhood here. Do you yeah, agree with that? The lower, the, 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 I would say the, a well used home. A well-used home, Margie said, would go for. Now, a well-used home would go for 400 to 450,000. So you're saying it'd be closer to five even for a two bedroom. Yes. Yeah, Margie says closer to five for a two bedroom house here. But you can turn around, you can buy a duplex, a very decent duplex in a nice, nicer neighborhood. It won't be, it won't be the Ritz Carlton by any stretch but a nice, decent house. Um, we could, we can get a decent duplex, a very decent duplex for five to six, maybe stretch it a little bit to 625. But your in-laws sold their tiny house for 509. What town was that in? Annette. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Roberta. I just could not have her. You know, if you're living in a condo that you have purchased and you have to deal with those homeowners association fees, you own it, but you don't control it. And that just doesn't seem right. Hi, Glenda. Good to see you, friend. Speaking of buying and selling houses, Glenda is all familiar with that topic, aren't you, Glenda? Right before COVID, the landlord offered us the house we were living in. Wow, for 210 in Stafford, Virginia. That's beautiful. My goodness. What I wouldn't give for some prices like that. I know in a lot of areas of the country, they're just not nearly as high. Because people have in California. Oh, Sharma, see, you're doing the same. You did the same thing for your son that I'm doing for my daughter. Bless your heart. Marge Hecklinda just said, Margie, maybe we should buy a duplex. You won't find one in the country. Yeah, she says, that would be great, Mom, but you won't find one in the country. 
four bedroom that was in Villa Rica, Villa Rica, Georgia. Wow, just found one about a mile from me. Four bedroom, two bath, 279. Oh my gosh. And that's, let's see, tell me again which state you're in, Betty. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. What we wouldn't give for that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lauren's doing really well for somebody as young as she is in her career. And, you know, she's just about to graduate with her degree in accounting and is with a company that's very supportive of Oklahoma, is very supportive of her going on to get her CPA. She's doing really well, but a kid just can't buy a house here. It's impossible. It's impossible. So she could stay here until she's 40, or she could... Her mom could help her buy a duplex. And that's and that's <laughs> I think that means there might be an element of self-preservation in this. <laughs> so much for being the noble mother, right? Huh? And, and just to keep in mind, Lauren's not doing like a lower wage job. Either. No, no, she's not. Lauren is, is doing quite well for one who is 23 years old. She's, she's kicking it, actually. I'm very, very proud of her. She has made some really good decisions and is a really good employee and is moving pretty fast in her career. But a kid just can't get started in this market by yourself. Farmland here in Kansas is out of sight in our country. You cannot build a new home unless it's on at least 40 acres. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to have 40 acres, so? Oh, my gosh. Is that a mule? We're paying 1300 a month in rent, yeah. Was well, about 200000 before COVID now. that Was well, about 200000 before. Um, Say that again, Roberta, because I, I didn't quite catch that, babe. You know what it's like when we all try to talk, type. It's... <laughs> Sometimes it's just not easy. Okay. I'm just about done with my fussy cutting. I just wanted to chat here today. I wanted to have an excuse to chat. These are very pretty flowers, by the way. And there's a little effort to fussy cutting them, but they're not real. I mean, some of them are pretty small. But then you just have to make the decision if you even want to include the tiniest pieces. Sometimes I just don't put on the tiniest pieces. Okay, I just move up. on. Uh, the kit is now available. Again, if you don't want to do the fussy cutting, those push-out sheets are $1.69 a piece. So you can very reasonably get a push-out sheet and avoid the fussy cutting if you like. And it doesn't matter if the flowers are the same. Just get one with bright, pretty flowers on it. And these... The nice thing about the colors they chose in the browns, blues, um, tans, is that they're pretty universal. They'll go with anything. Canada's more expensive. Betty, what would a two-bedroom house go for in your area, up there in the BC area? Um, I know your Canadian currency is a little bit different, but how much Canadian would it be roughly? for a two bedroom house in Canada. It was 200,000 before COVID, now twice that. Yeah, in the last two years, that has happened. Um, it used to be, we're in Portland, Oregon, and well, we're west, southwest of Portland, in Tigard, but um, we're kind of a little bedroom community of Portland. And um, Tigard has always been more expensive than Portland proper. And Vancouver, across the river in Washington, um, Vancouver has always been pretty reasonable. But in the last couple of years, property values have doubled in Vancouver. 
After living apart for a year, that's when I contacted this place. It's very nice and clean. Started out at six ninety eight and just went up to seven hundred and thirty two rent. Yes, you are truly blessed, Annette. <laughs> truly, truly blessed. You know what I find though? It's all it's all comparable, kind of. Well, the kinda, way it just had to be because, lower. Right, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Well, we also, and that's that's actually a very good point that Margie's making that all things are relative because it, here in Oregon, um, what is minimum wage now? Fourteen something an hour? Four, fourteen an hour? I think. I think it's. I think it's fourteen, but it's going to go to fifteen. It'll go to 15 soon. Um, and so that's the least anybody's going to make. But you're going to pay it all out in rent. So <laughs> is it better or worse? I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, that's true. That's true. And we do have here in the Portland area, we have Nike and we have um, Intel and we have a lot of pretty big employers that pay some pretty good wages. So that drives housing prices because people want to live here in order to access those jobs. We have standard insurance and we have, um, who else do we have? Col Columbia Sportswear and we have professional ball teams and stuff, of course. And we have, we have a lot of corporate headquarters here. Not as many as some of the really big cities, but we do. What a blessing to have your dad build your house, Sharma. That's beautiful. You know, the first house that I built was was built in 1910. I said the first one I built. The first house I bought that my grandmother helped me buy. The house was built in 1910. It had been a rental property for you know, probably 30 years and nobody had ever put any money into it and it needed a lot <laughs> but it was in a price range that I was willing and able to pay with a little assistance from my grandmother at the time um, a price range that I felt comfortable getting committed to and um, my dad who had been a contractor and kind of a jack of all trades, did most of the work on that for me. So you and I have similar stories in a lot of respects, Sharma. We both have had a lot of family support getting started, didn't we? And then now we're offering a lot of family support. It just seems right to pay it, pay it forward, doesn't it? It's so fun to see my daughter so excited, though. She's created, you, you can see what an analytical mind she has. She, our townhouse, two bedroom and den, is 1.5 million. Is that what I'm reading? Wow. Okay, that's more expensive. <laughs> you have definitely... Got it on us, Betty McSorley. Oh my gosh, it's much more expensive there. What's the Holy Canadian, cow. What's the Canadian money? Exchange. Yeah. Um, it's it's less than dollars. Yeah. So I don't know what the current exchange is. I haven't noticed what the current exchange is for a while because Betty always less her heart pays in US funds. Wowzer, that's expensive. But it's good to know. <laughs> um, it could be worse for us, couldn't it? <laughs> wow. Wowzer. Um, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that's really a lot. Um, my other daughter, Jordan, as you guys know, wow, 30% more. Okay. So 1.5 million ratcheted up to by 130%. Holy cow. You would be lowering it in dollar amounts though. Oh, no, you wouldn't. Oh, yes, you would. Yes, you would. So it's, yeah, so it's going to be about a million. 
Holy cow. That's still an awful lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Wow, sir. Okay. Yeah. So we haven't got it that bad. That's what I have just learned from this conversation. <laughs> Sharma says, I drew up the plans and hammered a lot of nails. Well, if you grow up with a dad who's a contractor and exterminator and all the other things my dad did over time, you learn to pound a lot of nails. I have been on the roof of buildings with a crowbar taking the roof off. <laughs> I have been with a big sledgehammer taking walls out. I have done these things. I have spent endless hours of my lifetime, endless hours with a paintbrush turning rentals. <laughs> I have not seen it yet, Roberta, you know. I feel really bad, but I'm just going to tell you guys the truth. I've been meeting myself. You, I said this. I've been meeting myself coming and going for weeks. And I haven't picked up the mail out of the mailbox for more than two weeks. So I probably have it here. I know I have Thelma's cranes here. I probably have all kinds of good stuff in my mailbox that I haven't seen. So I will have something to look forward to besides the bills I know will be there. <laughs> I just love that dragonfly card. I show it to everybody who will stop and look. <laughs> I just love that thing. That is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So I really look forward to seeing another. Okay, I've done that one. I've done that one. Let's do this card next. I'm using, just so you know, for your reference, when you get your kit and you're looking, this is one variation of the card kit. I'm using these cards at the bottom. For some reason, I just like them better. I thought they were more elegant. So, <laughs> oh, okay. I will get it out of the box if I've got a check in it. So I'm using the samples at the bottom of the pages, guys. No kidding, Sharma. No kidding. You and I really do have a lot of similarities in our backgrounds. Okay, so let me see what I need to do that one. Here we go. I need this topper. Had the wrong one out here. I need lavender. And I need a dark blue. Twenty instead of eighteen. I don't know what that means. Well, Brittany, she put a note on it for me. It would be great if I knew what the note meant. <laughs> I have no clue. Okay, so let's get a card out here. We're gonna make the, the we're gonna make this pot of flowers next. Ooh. <laughs> so Annette learned to do all kinds of home improvements when she was on her own. And James was very surprised <laughs> to find out how much she knew. <laughs> Margie's like that. Margie is absolutely the build it person in her household. Um, have, I got, have I ever told you guys the three most um, concerning words in the English language, the three most terrifying words in the English language. It will sum up my needle, thread, machine. <laughs> Marty said needle, thread, machine. That's a, that's a close second. <laughs> the three most terrifying words in the English language are some assembly required. <laughs> there are the builders of things, and there are those who employ the builders of things. I am the latter. <laughs> I should never be allowed to build things. Now, I'm a dandy at taking things apart, but I am not gifted at building. <laughs> However, Berta said she was like that with cars. She could tear apart a car and put it back together. Yeah, I could call AAA. <laughs> That's what I would do. Uh, no, Mom. <laughs> Didn't you catch it? She doesn't, no assembly required. <laughs> <laughs> we can hire Debbie. <laughs> we 
Well, if it's a fix-up house and you need a wall out, I got that. I can I can swing a sledgehammer. That's not a problem. But um, if it comes to um, protecting or bearing walls, you know, or determining which is which, you don't want me. <laughs> One time, I've told you guys about my mom and how determined she is. So they bought this old house in Kelso. It was the one I grew up in. And when they bought it, I don't know how many square feet it was. It was just tiny. And it was old as the hills, old as the hills. But the price was right. And dad knew what he needed to know to make it nicer. So they bought it. and. They started with this basic little frame of a house. It was so old that the, that the studs went um, horizontally. So mom kept saying, Jim, when are we going to be able to move forward and do something with that bathroom? You know, I really want to get on with things and get that bathroom put in better than it is right now because it had this little tiny cupboard of a bathroom and she wanted a nice, he promised her a nice deluxe pretty bathroom. And he said, well, I just got to get time, Peggy, to take that wall out and then we'll have the space to start reconstruction and um, I'll get it done. But I just have to have time to get that wall out. Well, he went to work. She called her friend. And she said, you want to you want to do a project with me today? And her friend said, Oh, sure, sure. I'll I'll come over. She came over, mom handed her a sledgehammer. And they had a crowbar and some nail pullers and they went to work. And they took that wall out while dad was at work. Well, dad came home from work and here's mom just pleased as punch with herself over the idea that she has this wall out and now he can continue the construction on the house. And he panicked, called in all the favors that were due to him from all of his friends. And they spent all night keeping the ceiling from collapsing because she just took out the load bearing wall. <laughs> which was why he hadn't gotten around to taking the wall out. <laughs> but things moved right along with the house from there. <laughs> I think he was afraid what might happen if he didn't keep it going. <laughs> because that's who my mother is in a nutshell right there. This is the same woman who has done such a remarkable job of fighting cancer. Is it any wonder that she would be as fabulous as she has been when that is her spirit. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make this two, is it, was it two and a half? I'm just measuring this off here. And this is just a little over two and a half. So I'm gonna make that two and a half and I'm gonna make this one five and a quarter. Two and a half by five and a quarter. And I might have to go a little smaller than this, but as you know, we like to try larger and then bring it down as necessary. Yeah, see, I'm still going to need a little more board around that. So let's take another quarter off of here. It's currently two and a half. Let's go to two and a quarter. And this is currently five and a quarter. Let's go to five. There we go. Oh, that looks pretty, doesn't it? Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm liking that a lot. Now, yep, so that's who my mom is. I come from strong stock. <laughs> Not necessarily wise stock, mind you, but strong stock. <laughs> Hi, Kim. We're just talking about taking out load bearing walls. <laughs> Oh, goodness sakes. One of these days you'll meet my mom. She'll be here and I'll put her on camera and you can meet her because 
Will Jeez. she love you for that? Or will um, she feel like me kicking and screaming? You know, she'd be fine, I think. <laughs> she wouldn't know what to say that's the only thing she would say well i don't know what i'm supposed to do when you put me on there and i say you talk you talk just like me well i don't know what to say that's probably what she'd say i'm not sure what that's supposed to be about i don't know what you'd say this is going to be pretty isn't it it's going to be beautiful <laughs> kim's talking about some redesigning too well, the one thing I learned from that story is make sure you know if it's a load-bearing wall before you take it out. You know, that's good to know. <laughs> I think I'll move that up just a tad from where I had it. Now, my card in here does not have corners on it, but I really think they'd be pretty with corners. So I'm going to add some. <laughs> and I actually think I might put big corners because it's so tall. This, this section of this card is really tall, and that will help use up some of that space. So I'm going to do that. And you got a whole sheet of these in your kit, so we can use some extras. Hmm. Yep, you want to know if it's load bearing. The reason I'm holding this one back is that it has all the innies in it, and these others are coming off the sheet pretty cleanly. And I don't want to sit and poke them all out if I can just choose a different one that will peel out for me. So I'm being lazy. So you'll see some little de design differences between mine and these samples because you know me i have to do that i just kind of it's my little independent streak i have to okay i know i have pink jewels here somewhere i believe they're right here in this stack but for some reason i'm looking right over the top of them Or maybe not, because they're not there. Well, if I were them, where would I be? Under your Up book there. Book. Oh. <laughs> Upside down on the table. <laughs> okay. I'll bring her up here one of these days. She hasn't felt much like traveling lately for obvious reasons. But when she gets strong enough to feel like she'd like to get out of her house, which right now with all the chemo, all the radiation and chemo she's had to go to, the last thing she wants to do is leave her house. But she, uh, when she gets to where she's feeling up to coming down for a visit, I will get her on camera. I could try and see if I can get her on my iPhone. We're going to her house this weekend, but it just depends on whether she's feeling inclined. I can't promise, but I'll see. Maybe. Whoops. I just got that one buried. I buried my sticker. That's way down here, but I got it. These tweezers are great. 21 teapots. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Glenda had 21 teapots. Holy smokes. That's a lot of teapots. Yeah, just the last part of that sentence was that she hasn't started on the teacups yet. I can't even imagine how many teacups there are to match 21 teapots. 
I can't even imagine. How many do you have? I don't know. I have teapots wise. I, I only have two, two teapots. That seems like a fairly reasonable number. As yeah. much as you love teacups and teapots, I'm teacups kind of surprised. Okay. All right. <laughs> There's the answer. And you have to keep in mind that teacups are cheaper than teapots. So therefore. Okay. This piece, this dark blue on top is pearlescent. I don't know if you can see that. It, your, our eyes kind of get attracted to the shininess of the paper and the stickers but when you see this in person this layer right here is pearlescent and beautiful maybe in deep trouble with me she went to oh oh she went after bird knocked down five cups filled with pens tooth <laughs> and took you 45 minutes to pick it up naughty kitty kitty just wanted to play pickup sticks naughty kitty he want no Naughty Kitty wanted Thelma to play pickup think, sticks. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that sounds true. That sounds true. Okay, these next two we don't have to put together because they're already put together. Thank you again, Margie. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's just go ahead and pop these cards together. All righty, let's see. I have. This one with one layer, nope, two layers. I've got blue and purple. And then this blue. That's pretty. That's very pretty. Okay, so I'm going to cover my card with my blue card stock. <laughs> she really is a naughty kitty. <laughs> I just love her. You'll have to tell these guys what you and Bob did today, Margie. What you oh. and Bob did. Um, well... Bob has been pointing out that his kitty cat loves eating these purple flowers outside. And one of the flowers I know um, isn't good for cats. And so I recommended that maybe we go down and pick up some things that cats could eat and make a bowl of them. So he hasn't wanted to let kitty outside because it's been cold and damp. So he's not sure that she'll like the rain. So we don't know if Kitty had, likes the um, likes the plants yet, but we planted them all in a bowl that would be just her height at the, on the back porch. And I made it, I made sure that we bought pretty colors and different colors of safe things for them to eat so that it would work with Bryce's aesthetic around his deck. And so we, we went, we planted them all. He worked very hard, figured out where he wanted each plant to go. And so now we just have to wait to see if Kitty's kitchen is going to be yummy or not. <laughs> I thought that was very sweet that Margie suggested taking him shopping to buy things that were safe for his kitty. And then they went out there today and planted them. And isn't that sweet? We love Bob. We just love him. He loves Margie. He thinks Margie's about the the yeah. living end. He told her the other day, Margie, you're my special friend. Because she brings him hot chocolate a couple times a week. I too could be a special friend if I gave him cho chocolate a couple times a I week. I bring it once a month when I do the taxes. It's my <laughs> celebration dance. <laughs> I'm just teasing. There oh, is. isn't that pretty? I'll show that. Just a minute. I just don't know. I'll just a minute. I'll show their creation to you. A kitty plant buffet for sure. Okay, here is the kitty buffet they made today. Isn't that pretty? Behind that is my purple plant that she keeps chewing on. I think we're going to have to move that up onto the rail so she can't get to it. And then we'll have these plants that are better for her. Isn't that pretty? I think you did a beautiful job with that. I think you did great. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. I sent it to Bryce. Oh, that was nice. Okay, 
these are not exactly the same color of blue, by the way, but I think they're very complementary to one another. See, look at this one. This one, you can really see the shine. Unfortunately, however, we're going to put another purple piece in here. We wouldn't absolutely have to do it if we didn't want to. I really do like the way that the, the what do you guys think? Here is without the purple insert. It does show off the pearlescence more if we don't put it in. But here, let's see. I have to see what size it's going to be in order to be able to put in a reasonable. Let's do three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Let me cut one so we can see what it looks like with it in there. I actually think this is really pretty without the insert too. You guys tell me what we want to do. I'll follow your direction. Here's with the insert. And that's very pretty too. Do you like it with? Actually, it's supposed to go like this, I guess. Let's put this on the bottom. Let's see. This goes on the bottom. Let me try that again because I wasn't holding it right. Here's the insert piece if we use it. Okay, there's with. And here is without. I do like that the pearlescence shows without, but I think they're both beautiful. Pops more on the dark. So I got without, 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 with. Go on, can you slide down a little bit? Without, with. That's the top there. Okay. And oh, oh, you, like I'm just trying to look up? at the votes. Yeah, I'm okay. just trying to look at the votes. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's quite a few more up that way. Okay. Without, with. Without, 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 I think without win. Okay, let's put it, let's just put it on here this way. I do like that. Look how beautiful this piece is. And I do like the fact. Now, when you look at these inserts, does this bring to mind some of the cutting dies you guys have and something you can do with your own papers? We have a lot of pearlescent papers in stock. And this is a beautiful idea for making your own layering guides, don't you think? So look at your look at your current supply of cutting dies and see what you could do in terms of making your own borders and using some pearlescent paper to create some gorgeous layering pieces. Are these dazzles, Debbie? The number at the top yes. matches, but yes. I just want to make sure before I put them in. They are dazzles. Okay. They are special purchase dazzles I bought after we stopped, after it was part of that big purchase I made right at the end where none of them were in packages, but I bought hundreds of each one. So we would be resupplied before we left hot off the press. Or they left us, however you look at that. Okay. Get this on here. So I don't know about you guys, but I like working with supplies that remind me of things I can do with what I have already. Velvet per paper would be gorgeous. Yes, it would. Velvet would be beautiful. And velvet runs beautifully through a dye machine. It does, actually. It really does. So if you wanted to put that flower inset with your dyes on the side, like what she recommended with this paper, you could do the same thing with your velveteen and get, this, get a different look, but it would just... It would be very rich, though, wouldn't it? Very beautiful. It would be very rich and very tactile. I like a card that you can 
you know, that you can feel and it's got textures to it, whether it's the texture of layers or the texture of velvet or the texture of an embossing folder. I love, love, love texture in a card. We only have one more card left, guys. I'm probably going to keep you for just a little over an hour today. But that's okay. If anybody wants to watch the January 6th hearings, they start at, I think, um, the coverage started at 7, but the actual testimony begins at 8. So I'm going to have you out of here slightly after eight o'clock eastern time if anybody wants to go see those hearings it's on just about every channel i think except fox i set my recorder just in case it took longer than i thought to fussy cut my items but... um Roberta's asking for a link to this kit, please. I love what, one of the things I love about kits is that they can present ideas we might not have thought of. And, you know, just the learning of something by doing them, then being able to take off and do that on my own. Here's card number five. And you've seen what we did. We covered our five and a quarter by five and a quarter card with navy blue cardstock. We added lavender, then we added that deeper blue. There's no class on Saturday. Yes, that is true. Bryce is in, in Phoenix. He's in Phoenix, Arizona with a company meeting for the next few days. So he's in phoenix and marchy doesn't work on saturdays so i just decided it was a heck of a good time to take a day off and i feel like i could use it margie's been telling me it looks like i'm kind of dragging my back feet <laughs> and it's true i have been i just have a lot going on in a lot of different directions and you were you were very nice about it but you did tell me that i would look like i was a little on the i was on the peak inside yep okay sounding like my mother every day <laughs> so i know i've sounded tired because when i've gone back and and um watched my videos I haven't had the same spring in my step that I sometimes have and I could tell you guys could tell I was tired I don't like that so a day off is a good thing and then I got a week off coming up when we go to the beach I'll I think, did I update you on the calendar yet? I think I did. I will be at the beach recharging my batteries at the Esther Lee. It's a wonderful little place in Lincoln City, Oregon. If you ever get out this way, Lincoln City is one of the towns to see. I do. There are so many fun things there. They have a kite flying competition. They have a sandcastle competition that people come from all over the world to participate in. And they aren't just sand castles. They're all kinds of sand sculptures. It's very fun. They do a lot of oh, rock shows, not rock as in rock and roll, but like stone and gem shows and that kind of thing there, There's which I love too. I don't know if I ever told you guys, I really love rocks. I really love rocks. I do. My husband thinks I'm totally crazy, but I do love rocks. The only thing better than good old fashioned rocks of interesting sizes, shapes, and descriptions are uh, fossils. I love me some fossils. Lots of people like shells. 
I have my grandmother's collection of shells because my mom found out that Emma was enjoying shells, so she <laughs> sent them all my way. And I'm talking hundreds of three shells. Three and a half by two and three quarters. But every time she went to the beach, she would collect a handful. Two and three quarters. There we go. All right. Oh, I do love rocks. I just do. I have a box of wonderful, interesting rocks. I love geodes and I love, oh, I love agates and I, I just, I love stone beads. Oh, I love rocks. Hey, Betty, I've got a quick question for you. Um, with rice not here and that, is there anything that we're supposed to get them for cleaning? What? No. Okay. Oh, to check. Yes. Um, I don't know. Um, did they leave? I don't know. Okay. If they didn't leave, Just I can write them a check. Nobody's going to care if I take a minute to pay my housekeepers. Margie was being discreet. She should just come out and say, do you owe the housekeepers a check? <laughs> that I understand. <laughs> Huge piece of milky quartz that my grandmother dug up in the mine. I was told by a neighbor that, wow, a little bigger than football. Wow, that's fun. That's fun. Oh, I have quartz and I have, I have, a, my dad pulled just a wonderful, really wonderful piece of um petrified wood it's about that big and it looks just like a chunk of wood until you pick it up and it's just heavy i have a big beautiful piece of petrified wood he knew i would like it so he brought it home because i was the kid who was easy to please bring me a rock <laughs> just bring me a rock and i'm happy so I don't think I've ever shared that with you before, but yes, it's one of my many obsessions. I do love rocks. So very fun. I love the fact that there's so many different kinds of rock and different, are they gone? Uh, no. Oh, still okay. Here. So okay. You are good. All right, they um, can come out and get a check when they need it. Yeah, I nobody's going to gonna care. Um, yeah, we're actually almost done anyway. But it just hit me all of a sudden. That was nice because I didn't think of it. I should have written a check and given it to him before we got started. But did I think of it? Uh uh. Okay, on their card sample. They actually cut slits in the, I'm not sure how much you can see this, they cut slits in the background and they fed the cardstock through it. I'm gluing mine on, guys. <laughs> okay, so these layers are on. Let's put some jewels on this thing. Ooh. They, they just need a few jewels. There are some alternate patterns here if you want to use the alternate the alternate as in larger patterns in your cards feel free to do that you can always take off and go your own direction with these I really like the way these pearlescents play with the sparkliness of the stickers and the colored layered cardstock I think it's fun this is actually a really fun kit. Um, if the, and once again, I'll say it, if you're concerned that the cutting will get tedious, just pick up a couple push out sheets. They're very inexpensive. And if that's all that's going to stand in your way of having a good time with the kit, then just get a couple push out sheets because those images will work just as well. What's going to say it's cool. Um, I don't know, but um, I can look to see. Yeah. Somebody said, cool, Glenda. Every time my parents went on trips, they would pick up large rocks and then Daddy built his second house oh. where the fireplace was built. Oh, that's neat. 
That's very neat. And then my father wonders why we always ask if we can pull over and like dig up this plant or. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got our background done and decorated. Aren't these pretty? Now look at that. There you can really catch the pearlescence, can't you? Love those. Okay. And. Oh. All right, let's add our last Hopper, as soon as I figure out what I've done with it. There it is. I might put some corners on this one too, just because I didn't do that little corner treatment and it might add just a little something extra. So let's think about whether we want to put some corners on this. This is absolutely fine the way it is. It's beautiful as a matter of fact, but Maybe we want them. I don't know yet. Where's our corner sheet? Okay. Let's see if we can peel some of these up that will come out of that. It's got all those innies in it. I just want ones that will come up clean. Not that it takes so very long to take the innings out, but why would I do that if I could avoid it? So you're going to make, use a fair amount of this whole sticker sheet, but you still will have maybe half of it left for other projects. And there's a lot of innings in it. This does kind of give this a kind of a jewel quality when we put these corners in it. I think it looks good. There we go. That's card number six. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Let's look at our finished cards here. We still have, these are going to be fun to use. Look at these big, big sheets that we have. Now I usually peel this back and as you can see, I bend this and roll them off on my finger and then use the tweezers. I, I can lay this back down for storage. So we have half a sheet of gold and we have most of a sheet of our stickers left. We have, I have three pieces of cardstock left for some reason. I don't totally understand. I'm going to send you the cardstock you need to make them just the way I made them here, which may or may not be a little bit different than the video, but you can come back and look at these. There we go. There is the hydrangea basket. Beautiful. The sunflower. Here's the violet vase or pansy vase. Here is the piano, keyboard, and music. I think these cards are really beautiful. They don't look like $2 cards, do they? At the $13.69 we're charging for this kit. Six cards, $13.69. These are going to be, what, about two and a quarter maybe a piece? That's a pretty good deal. A pretty good deal. But we try to bring you good deals. Imagine what you'd pay to do these in any other card class. Five bucks, I guarantee it. Five dollars a piece. This would be thirty dollars worth of cards in any other card class. Here, two twenty-five. 
The die cutting on the card panels is already done. You do have to cut out, fussy cut the um, additional images. Let me show you what they look like in the kit itself because mine are all torn up now. But let me open this one. Yeah, that's why Margie put it here is so I could show you. So you get the pre-cut, the kit, the original kit includes just the pearlescent die cuts and the booklet that has the, you get six of these and then you get the booklet that has the card designs and in the middle see you've got alternate designs at least two alternate designs and then in the middle you have these pages that are single-sided that have the cutout images and if you if you don't want to do the cutout images just pick up some some of the fussy cuttings more so than others, Mary R. But, you know, here's what I say. If you get down to pieces like this and you don't want to do it, skip that piece. You're already going to have one, two, three, four, five layers and use this rose and the extra one and skip the stem. So if you don't want to do all of the, this one's very easy to cut. But if you don't want to do all the individual sunflower petals down here, skip that piece. You don't have to do that. It's completely up to you. This one's the one Margie was complaining about that had 51,000 little flowers. <laughs> you don't have to make all those flowers. Just, you don't have to. You just have to have a crazy friend. <laughs> you just have to have a crazy friend to do it for you. There you go. So that's what the, um, that's what the cutting looks like. It's a very reasonably priced kit. And the kit itself, you know, just for future reference, we made a card kit out of it by adding additional cards and envelopes and sticker sheets and layering papers. But this piece itself would have um, been very reasonably priced. So, and think again about looking for dies in your collection where you can make your own. I know some of you have some great dies. So think about making some of your own layering sheets. Because to me, that's half the value of some of these kits is just to bring up ideas you might not have thought of otherwise. Next week, we're doing creative stamping with the jungle set. I went through it in detail last night. Does anybody need to see that again? The jungle set for next week. If anybody needs to see it, I'll be happy to pull it out. But I don't want to bore you if you've already seen it. We have no class on Saturday. Saturday, I'm taking the day off. No cameraman, no problem. I'm off. Um, and on next Thursday, we're doing this Creative Stamping Magazine. It will be great fun. Me, um, I don't blame you. You wanted to see it, Betty? Is that what I'm seeing? Okay, here is the A4 stamp set. We got parrots and toucans. We got frogs. Look at that frog. Frog's really cute. I hope you can see him. We got jungle leaves. We've got flowers, butterflies. We've got cockatiel, cockatoos, you guys would have to tell me. We have a leopard. We have a sloth. We have a ringtail lemur. We have all manner of flowers and beautiful hibiscus and orchids and others. Beautiful. So we're going to play with this next week. And this kit also comes with 36 sheets, I believe this is of double-sided papers so some fun things to play with there and our magazine and this is a use your own stash kit i think it's 13.95 it's in the um this is in the um uh, live stream classes category 
I think it's thirteen ninety five. Thirteen ninety nine. Thirteen ninety nine. Excuse me. Thirteen ninety. Sure. And Margie's going to link it for you. This stamp set alone would be twenty to twenty five dollars if you bought it here. This is from Stampendous. These are not cheap, ugly stamps. These are good quality Stampendous stamps, and you get that huge stamp set, all those papers, and the Idea magazine for thirteen ninety five. So I think that's what I've got to share with you today. Um, when I come back, our Saturday classes will be using the comb. If you didn't get the comb yet, pick up the comb. We're going to need this for our, next, for our next quilling class, which will be a week from Saturday. Okay? If there are no questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom, let's go watch the hearings. <laughs> Okay. All right. I will see you guys on the flip side then next Wednesday. In the meantime, good night, Gracie.